Hello again, welcome to another episode of Chris Reads His Books. And today we're reading blog number 11 for those of you keeping count. It, it should be in the title, so it's all good. And we've got a lovely bit of Nick Lachey. Anyone remember him as our lyric man today? I don't want to waste another day stuck in the shadow of my mistakes. This is a brief tale of how I learned to take a little bit more responsibility in my job. As testers, I believe that we have to be advocates for quality. We cannot force it, but we can and we should be straight shooters, and we should say it as we see it. When I was new to testing in the games industry, I didn't really understand the role of a tester. We weren't allowed internet access, and worse than that, we had next to no interaction with the dev team. Just to add to that, we were in different buildings and we had different break times. We literally had nothing to do with them. My friends at the time, they, they thought they knew exactly what I did though, and there were a lot of misguided ideas about them and beanbags and things like that, just bouncing around on yoga balls and things. These days, I like to think I know what I'm doing most of the time. And now my friends have got no idea what I do. Still no beanbags. That's not the only thing that's changed. My testing on my first project was pretty big, about 30 testers. We were a really mixed bag, but undisputably gamer types. There were a few in the team who took bug count as the biggest badge of honor, seeking quantity over quality, if you can class one bug as better than the others. In lieu of this observation, and in my own naivety, I decided not to partake in that competition, and would intentionally ignore bugs, leaving them for the bug hungry, as I saw meteor bugs. Upon release, I noticed there were a few bugs that I had seen, bug, <laughs> ignored, but ignored, good typo, in the release version. This was before the days of day one patches and DLC. The release product was the only release. Not my proudest achievement in life and I didn't own up to it. Here's a nice tweet from Jerry Weinberg. The world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. Quote from Einstein. Coincidentally, Jerry Weinberg tweeted this Einstein quote, which I googled to verify and Reddit confirms. Who doesn't trust Reddit after all? And it resonated with me. Look, I mean, this is this is broader than quality of things. I think we can talk about silence as compliance and many other things here. My first test to roll outside of the games industry presented me with the opportunity to maintain a large automation suite. A lot of this work required analysis, maintenance, and updating of various test cases that were being executed on a nightly basis. Many changes were being made on the code base, and the automation was there to catch defects quickly. On occasion, there would be mergers that meant a lot of tests failed. <clears throat> now, in terms of sort of a little bit of terminology there, I would quite often like to say the code fails and the tests aren't the ones that failed, they succeeded, but shh, let's move on. When there are failures en masse, it is possible that other failures are masked, and this was true in this scenario. It took me three weeks to realise that a suite of failures were not down to this one problem. Bad me. This time, however, I reported the issue in TFS. Oh, <laughs> throwback. I raised it with the Scrum Master and I informed the team in the stand-up. And when pushed for a reason that this hadn't been reported sooner, I had to hold my hands up and admit the fault was mine. A moment's embarrassment was a little unpleasant, but for the sake of the quality of the end product, it was the right thing to do. And I didn't have the guilt that comes with ignoring issues. We will all miss bugs, but to intentionally do so can only be detrimental to the quality of our end product. It isn't necessarily only our call as to whether issues will be fixed or not, but we should always find the time to raise them. If anything, this can be an issue sometimes for me. In this age of distraction, and managing it can be hard, but I'm getting better at that than I used to, and I'll continue striving to improve. Now, this is true of a lot of things. I think we can often see problems and not necessarily talk about them in the hope that somebody else will deal with them. But to that point, from Jerry's quote of Einstein, silence is compliance. If we see bad things, negative things, not just bugs, but issues in, in our cultures, in, in things, call people out on, on LinkedIn for bad behavior and, and, and Twitter and in conferences and, and interactions and stuff. If we've got the power, if we've got the spoons to spend on those things, we really should. Um, thank you very much, everybody, and I will see you next time.